Superboy Beyond fans, welcome back. It's your ever-present hosts, Tom and Chris, here with another one of our patented commentaries. Today, we're going with a Season 4 episode, one of the better of the clip shows from Season 4, Cat and Mouse, written mm. by the great Gerard Christopher himself. Yeah, he only wrote two episodes. It's Part of me thinks it's a shame that the second <laughs> part was a clip show, but I mean... Okay, people, I, I think I said last week that the People versus Metallo is my favorite clip show. And you said maybe that will change upon rewatch of this one. So that's going to be interesting. Um, because I do remember like really enjoying this one a lot. Um, so yeah, that would be interesting to see if this is, uh, if this takes, overtakes my ranking between those two episodes. So yeah. Yep. So uh, everybody, get yourselves ready. Uh... Whether it be your your you know your streaming version from Amazon or whatever you're using, or it be the actual DVD. Uh, Tom, do you remember what episode number this is? Uh, I can't tell you off off the bat. I ripped ripped it from my DVD literally last week, and I forgot to even put the episode number on the title. <laughs> it just said Superboy Cat and Mouse. <laughs> um, well, so it's on disc through uh, two of season. Th- Four. Um, it is the final episode on disc four. So it's right after Who is Superboy. Funny how there's two clip shows back to back. Yeah, we've talked about that before. That is an odd thing. Like, I mean, and I don't get it as well because surely one of those clip shows could have been moved to maybe a little earlier in the season. Just just to put a bit of a gap between them. Yeah, and I mean, the other thing is, Who is Superboy has clips from the episode Metamorphosis, which didn't air till later. Did it really? I didn't yeah. know that. It's been, all, I, I mean, I haven't seen this next one for a while. The one you're talking about. I just, I, I'm blanking on the title now, even though you just literally just said it. I didn't realize it showed a clip from an episode that hadn't even aired yet. Yeah. And it's funny because. I vaguely remember, doesn't Cat and Mouse have an extended clip or something where there's like one extra shot that wasn't in the original episode? That I don't remember. Or am I just making that up? I could have sworn Cat and Mouse had like an extended clip from something, but maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe it's just a Mandela effect type thing. (laughs) I'm not going to bother Googling it now to see if that's true, but who knows? Maybe when we're watching this right now, you'll say, hey, maybe that's it. Get your uh, get your episode ready. Uh, remember, it's uh, disc two of season four, final episode on the disc. It's cat and mouse. Uh, remember, no, there's going to be no clips of the episode in the in our uh, pot our cotton commentary. It's just going to be a heavy filtered version right up at the top there. Um, it's just so you can keep in track with us. Um, so just get yourselves ready, and I'll count you in with a three, two, one, shrink. Because she's a shrink. <laughs> um, so, three, two, one, shrink. Here we go. <laughs> so, yeah. I know it's kind of a strange idea doing a commentary on a clip show. And I think I've even said that when we've done clip shows in the past. But this is one of those episodes where, if I remember right, it has a couple of full scenes in the clip show segments but a lot of it is more like a montage i seem to yeah. remember there's like a destruction montage or something at one point i forget yeah, what the because uh, she's asking him questions of have you ever know have you ever uh, destroyed public property right and yeah he has to lie and he says something like not only like not on purpose or something or maybe only when necessary or something like that yeah I forget what the line was. I'm sure I'll find out when we get there. It's funny that we were talking when we did the uh, Bride of Bizarro commentary, saying how much more lively the the bureau room looks in that episode. This is one of the only other episodes where uh, it actually looks like people are 
at work doing their job. And obviously it's for a story explanation, I'm guessing, but it's interesting they hired a bunch of extras for a clip show episode. Well, you know, you have to make it look like, you know, there's things going on. I mean, it's just like, True. you know, the, you know, any shot of the Enterprise, you, you have to have people walking through the, the corridors. Yeah. And it's interesting how it's Matt who uh, gives him the uh, the bad news that he's got to go in for a psychiatric evaluation. Hmm. And not part of me, Yeah, part of me wonders maybe whether Jackson was being paid slightly more for appearances. Maybe it was just that, you know, the actor playing Matt was slightly cheaper. So, yeah. But then you wouldn't hire all those extras if they're worrying about money. So maybe, I don't know. Maybe it was just in Jackson's contract that he only did a certain number of episodes this season. Yeah. So it's a pick and choose. Well, I, I guess we're just going to have to go with the story explanation that it would it would sound better coming from Matt than it would be from Jackson. Because you know True. how Jackson would say it to him. Uh, you got to go or you're gone. Hmm. Matt, at least, he says it, he says the same thing, but he says it in a different way. Yeah. Almost like, you know, tough love type thing. They're yeah. friends. You've got to do this, even if you don't like it. And I just, I just love that that moment on on, on Clark's face just now, where I'd love to. Hmm. Mm. Gerard as Clark, especially in seasons three and four, like it, I'm glad he stopped doing the whole uh, Urkel thing, but he's turned Clark. Where every now and then he'll do sort of a nervous sort of half smile on his cheek. It's almost like a nervous twitch. And it's obvious that he's doing it on purpose to like as Clark, but I don't know, it really works. It's a lot more subtle than what he was doing in season two. Yep. And I'm already seeing moments from that. And then we've got our introduction to Aaron Gray as the uh the psychiatrist. Aaron Gray, who everybody knows, was uh, uh, Wilma Deering on the Buck Rogers TV she series. Uh, God, it was about almost it was a little over ten years earlier. Hmm. At this point, you know, I, I'm not a big Buck Rogers guy. Like Buck Rogers, Flash Thompson, I've not seen. I don't think any of it. Yeah. I don't think I've even seen the Flash Gordon movie. I think the closest I've come to Buck Rogers is probably um, certain episodes of Star Trek Voyager with Captain Proton. <laughs> <laughs> Which, let's face it, Bride of Chaotica, like, it's a really sort of throwaway episode. You could take it out the season. It wouldn't make much difference. But yeah. I love that episode. I, I love the silly holodeck episodes in Voyager. Even the bad ones, like um, that one with the little Irish town. Yeah. And here we're using clip the dinner clip from uh rebirth mm. one of the best asked, things yeah because she asked him you know let's start with your family and i've got to say already though i mean just starting with this clip it's already making a statement about the kinds of clips we'll be seeing primarily in this episode because obviously with people versus metallo you know which episode it's going to be because you've only really got two options but stuff like this you're starting off and it's just saying this is going to be sort of the character focused episode of superboy yeah like we're gonna i mean it's, it's a great way to frame the whole story because yeah we're learning a little bit about how clark thinks of himself in ways that he doesn't vocalize in, in any other episode as far, as far as i can remember yeah and then of course you know what she just says is you know it it shows that you had a very uh normal caring loving upbringing mm. john hinckley jr had a normal caring loving upbringing making reference to the attempted assassination of president reagan mm. let's face it there's even some serial killers that reckoned their childhood was completely normal i don't know if i believe them <laughs> mm. But yeah, obviously that's just the start of what she's trying to find out. But yeah, asking about, you know, does he have a girlfriend? And now he's seeing all these moments with Lana and stuff. 
they've, cho they've chosen some really good clips. I seem to remember later on, though, they show a moment from Super Menace, which was um, funny because it was Clark's memory of it, but that wasn't Clark in his body at that moment. Mm. So, yeah, my memories of this episode are, oh, I've got some memories of it. Be interesting to see if I'm right, though. Because, like I say, could be completely wrong. And just the way he way he phrases it now is just it's complicated with the two of us. Hmm. One thing I've got to say as well, I like the way that Clark is being written with this with his answers. It's almost like this is a kind of sequel to Day in the Double Life, in a way. The diary entries are basically just a slightly differently framed variation on what he's doing right now. You almost could play those two episodes back to back, and it would um, it would still kind of work, and it would explain why Jackson is so on Clark's case about what he's doing as well. It's because he's potentially got a promotion coming up, and he wants to make sure he's not a slacker or something. Mm. You could easily have connected those two. Ah, oh, yes, the destruction montage. I think. <laughs> Oh, no, it's we're not quite there yet. I thought he was about to throw that thing through the screen. I missed what she asked. I'm assuming it's something about, like, how would being with you hurt her or something. Is that right? Yeah. I know we said it before. I do like Neela's costume. It's so 80s, but I just think it's it's over the top and it's just, I don't know, it's fun. She'd probably fit in well with an 80s metal band dressed like that. Absolutely. You could literally just put her in like black and white face makeup and she could just be like the first female member of KISS. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally all they'd have to do. And I love how she she's phrases it now. Almost as though you view yourself as two different people. Hmm. Now she's I, I like that because it's showing that Clark slipped up a little bit with his answers there. Like he's wording them very carefully, but yeah, he slipped up. And yeah, if you're going to have a montage of any moment, I think the transition from Clark to Superboy is a good one to have. Even if it is short, very short as it just was. You And you, you can mm. tell that she's getting frustrated with him right here. No, oh, he just did that sort of half smile thing that I was talking about. <laughs> that nervous Clark sort of tick that he did. Well, you know, that works better than, than the whole Urkel Clark thing. Yeah, it's better than, oh, you know, it, it was everything. It was like a whole body motion as, as Urkel Clark. It was very strange. I forgot about the lie detector. But I've just remembered how he solves it at the end. <laughs> we'll get there. Oh, he's talking about rebirth now, is he? Yep, there it is. Yep.
It's a shame. I really do think the only thing in Rebirth that doesn't work for me is the fact that they killed the villain at the end. Just because he, he was such a great villain. I, w- I want just at least the potential that he can come back and try again. Killing off Llewellyn, I just, I well, don't know. It's, it's yeah, still you know, something I, I, I consider. I look at it this way, you know. You don't want somebody that sadistic staying around. And especially considering the threat that he just posed to Superboy. Yeah, but that that was a setup for what sounded like a really interesting episode. And we've had tons of super sinister threats. I mean, let's face it, Lex Luthor stripped the skin from Leo's skull, <laughs> as you yeah. reminded me recently. Like, they've got plenty of super sinister threats. Like, how many people did Metallo kill in his first episode? I mean, I remember the Doctor, but, I mean, was there any more? I guess the Doctor. The, the not Doctor, doctor but, and then the old was... man who, who rebuilt them. Yeah, just two. But either way, I mean, he was covered in blood in one shot. Llewellyn was slightly more dark and sinister, but I mean, the uh, the guy that wasn't Vandal Savage, I think, survived, didn't he? Or was he killed at the end? No, I don't think he, he could die. I think yeah, he was he... just sentenced like a thousand years in jail or something. He was sentenced to life in prison. Oh right, without possibility. So it's just forever for him yeah oh and there he is you knew that that, that was that was good timing we were just talking about him and he pops up on the screen yep and you knew that gerard was going to use clips from that that episode in this i mean even if he hadn't written it this is one of the episodes the show you know i don't know you know in a lois and clark clip show whether i would count where if i would include any of the episodes dean kane wrote but in superboy like yeah this is this is a really good episode so mm. <laughs> erin gray is really showing how great of an actress she is because you can see the frustration on her face Clark there just saying you've got to learn to phrase your questions better. Just like he's having fun, sort of. He can see she's getting frustrated, so he's he's playing he's got a little bit of a sadistic streak right now. Yeah, well, he's been a bit cheeky. He obviously doesn't want to be there, so maybe he's just trying to make the session go quicker. Up uh, clip from Superboy's Deadly Touch, and uh, Hell Breaks Loose there, and Carnival, and just. The clips are going by so quick now, I've got no chance of identifying all of them. Well, change of heart, obviously. I don't even need to say which episode the portal is from. Okay, so that was the line, only in emergencies. Cool. Oh, and that's cool. He just noticed that by moving his hand, he's sent the uh, thing up a little bit, giving him the idea for the end. Considering it's a clip show, you know, there's um, there's some really good choices for which clips they use. See, part of me wants to see like a super cut of just this moment, just with every excuse that he's ever used over the course of the show. I wonder how long that video would have to be. <laughs> Probably like 10, 15 minutes. There's people on YouTube that make those sort of cuts. I think somebody did a montage of every time Clark turns into Superboy in the show. If you want an idea for another video... There you go. Interesting that they're using a clip from another clip show. Right mm. here. Yeah, that's an odd thing. I, I don't remember seeing that 
ever before. I've never seen a clip show use a clip from a clip show. Clipception. <laughs> oh, now this is a tough question. Well, you know, there is a way he could have answered this question. He could have just said he had a nickname. Oh, yeah, there it is. Clip from Super Menace. That wasn't a memory of Clark's. That was Lex Luthor and Clark's body. He should have had no idea about that moment because he was body there. swap. Body swap, sorry, yeah. He's he's holding, you know, holding him up in the chair. Superboy, I like the sound of that. Clark wasn't there for that moment. He was in Lex Luthor's body running from the police. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he should not have that memory. So it's I, a nitpick, you know, but who cares? <laughs> the way he could have he could have answered that question and it worked better is if he'd say, "Well, if I'm on a uh, an, on assignment for the bureau, I might use a phony name so that people don't yeah. know who I am." True. I like as well some of her questions earlier was like, have you ever destroyed private or public property on purpose? Only in emergencies. <laughs> have you ever lied to your co-workers? Only if I'm trying to protect the fees. He's just literally destroyed her private property and then lied to her about the fire coming out. <laughs> yeah. Well, it did just go out. He just didn't say how. I mean, he said it went out on its own. That was definitely a white lie. I forgot about this bit. Oh, she... Yeah, no, yes, I do. Yeah, he's he's going to turn around and fight for his job in a second, and that's all she really would have been waiting for, if I remember right. Maybe I've seen this episode more times than I remembered because a lot of this was coming back to me as we were watching. Great Clark Kent moment, that, you know. Still very much the character of Clark Kent, but he's got some confidence. Like It, it shows some development over the seasons that have been. And honestly, it's that kind of confidence you'll probably need when he becomes a reporter. Indeed. Yeah. He was uh, purposely winding her up a little bit during this episode, but it ends nicely. Handshake. I forget what the character's last name was. It's a shame there was something hiding it just there. Myers. Myers. It's, okay. You, if you look, if you no. if you look at the scene when he opens the door to leave on the glass, you can see it backwards. It's Myers. Mm -hmm. Plus, Matt did just say it a moment ago. Like, literally, as soon as I said, what's her last name? Matt says it on screen. <laughs> See, part of me thinks it's a shame because we had the episode threesome and we had the psychiatrist Vexman. It's almost a shame since they're two psychiatrists that they didn't have this episode air first and then have that character go on to become a villain or something. Like, that could have been interesting. Yeah. I mean, it still would have been probably better if it was Neela, but still. So, anyway, that was Cat and Mouse. Um, I wasn't sure if this would take over my ranking and actually reach a level above People versus Metallo, but I think it might have. I think the... The scenes they chose to use, I think, were all good choices. I think the, uh, the some of the montages were just a lot of fun. I especially loved that 
um, destruction montage as I I said at the beginning, you know, that was one of the few things I remembered about this episode. And yep. yeah, it's great. They just they showed just the best destruction because let's face it, there's a few moments over the course of Superboy where he's like broken through a wall and it hasn't looked quite as good. Um, I never thought when he breaks through the wall in Test of Time looked any good in, when he's inside the house and it explodes. I just, I don't know. It's because he's he's running with his sort of hands in front of his face. I just, I never thought it looked very good. Um, but there's a ton that look just absolutely fantastic. Like there was one destruction moment in the montage there, and literally as the wall broke through, you could see all the fake, actual fake bricks breaking off and stuff, and it's just. It just looks so much better than when they just like paint plywood or something. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know. I think this is the best clip show Superboy had, just because it also delves so deep into his psychology. Like you learn a little bit about who this version of Clark Kent and Superboy actually is inside, because it's stuff he never really has an opportunity to talk about unless it's with Ma and Pa. Um, yeah, and and it's great that they started that off. The ep- the uh, the clips off with Ma and Pa. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you would have to have had at least one Ma and Pa clip in there somewhere. And I mean, what what other moment are you going to choose? It's the probably the best Ma and Pa episode. It's certainly the best Ma episode. Um, because let's face it, she doesn't really get very much to do in any other episode. <laughs> this this is the one. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure I'm sure that they wrote it like that just to give Salome Jens. You know something more to do than just stand by and and say hi yeah i mean they obviously liked her because i mean they cast her back in season one and they recast so many different actors like i mean they didn't even have to bring back Stuart whitman but they did like i mean i don't think there would have been that many people that would have even noticed if they'd recast ma Obviously, some of like the geeks would have noticed, like us, oh, yeah. because stuff like that. But I mean, it's maybe it would have just ended up being a situation like the husband and bewitched, where they replaced him after like a year. Yeah, according to what my mom always said about that, uh, there was notification in the in the in the uh, in the newspaper at the time hmm. that due to uh, you know uh, health reasons, uh, Dick York had to leave the show, so they were yeah. replacing him as as Darren. Yeah, I forget what who the actor is that replaced him, but I always it's still Arjun. think it's the original. Yeah, I don't know him. I, I know the original guy. But, I mean, I don't seem to remember it hurting the show. Ever. I don't think people really care all the time with certain characters. I don't know why. But if Ma was only in maybe one or two episodes from season one and then didn't appear in season two but then shows up in three as a new actor, I, I doubt many people would have cared they most people probably would have just assumed it was scheduling conflicts or something yeah let's face it they've recast other people in in this show including the, the lead <laughs> so yes let's face it in a show where you can replace superboy himself yeah so clearly the people behind this show must have really liked her like really enjoyed what she was doing as well it's just kind of a shame that it took this long to actually do something with her Yes. But, um, we did talk in a recent episode, though, my theory as to why Pa has so much more to do. And I think that's because at one point they were probably planning on killing him off, like in the movie. And maybe they figured we'll use Pa now while he's alive. And then once he's gone, we'll focus on Ma. And then they just never killed him off. I have no idea if that's actually true. That's just my theory. But yeah. If anybody related, like who was involved in the show, can tell me, like, did you actually consider killing off Jonathan Kent at any point? Um, I'd be fascinated to know that. Yeah, I think the ones that would probably know that are are either Mark Jones or Mike Carlin. Yeah, well, fingers crossed. This happens to be one of the uh, the random episodes they've tuned in for. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I, as unlikely as that will be, I mean, I can't see many people from the show tuning in to watch us react to the clip show. Um, maybe Gerard Christopher might check it out at some point, just purely because it's one of the episodes he wrote. Yes. Um, I think of any episodes, those are the ones I would probably look to see what people are saying about them. Um, anyway, I really enjoyed this episode. I don't know that we can really talk much more on it, considering it was a clip show and we've already 
reacted to those episodes for the most part. Um, I didn't see any moments that I didn't remember being in original episodes. So I think I must have, it's just thought of memory, you know. Mandela no idea. Effect. Yeah, Mandela effects, just thought of memory. Just I'd re It's been a long time. I, I could have sworn that there was like an extended scene from the end of Superboy Lost or something where he was like saying like Lana was upset because Clark wasn't around while Superboy was missing. Maybe it was from a different episode where he was saying I was sick or something like that. I I don't know. I think that was actually in Who is Superboy? Oh, that's from Who is Superboy. Okay, and, so yeah. Yeah, and and he, he the the whole sequence is that he says, "Oh, I could tell I could tell you. I could explain to you any time that I've been missing." I don't know if it was that episode but it was a very similar scene in terms of lighting so you could be right they were both in the same location both in you know the bureau there was nobody else around it could have easily been from that and i it's just my memories connected to different episodes somehow um oh well it's the way it goes sometimes that's that's what happens when you don't watch certain episodes for years on end yeah. and only stick to your favorites you remember the favorites well but the other ones less so anyway Thank you all so much for watching. Oh, we didn't uh, give our ranking on this. Oh, yeah. I don't think we've done that for a while. I think we might have forgotten when we did Bride of Bizarro even. Um, maybe we ranked them both at the end or something. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Bearing in mind it's a clip show, I don't know if I can give it more than 7.5. I would go, I would go a 7.5 on it. Um, the, what takes it down mostly is the fact that it's a clip show. It loses points just for that. I'm sorry. It's you know you can make you can have the best clip show in the world. I don't think I'll ever give a clip show more than seven point five. Like there's a great clip show to like I think it's the second to last episode in the first season of Stargate SG One, and it's a great clip show where they're sort of being interviewed by people that are talking about shutting down the Stargate program, and it's a really great clip show. It's one of my favourite clip shows ever, and I still wouldn't give that more than a seven point five. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, best I can do. this. This has got bonus points because it it is, you know, Aaron Gray doing so great as this this psychiatrist who's trying to trip him up the whole time. Um, you know, he's he's. It's a bottle episode, you know, because it's two people in one room the whole episode. There's almost no Superboy in it except for the clips. Yeah, it's funny as well because I wonder if I would actually give this a slightly higher score if the clips just weren't in there. If like the whole episode was just a bottle episode with Clark in a psychiatrist's office, you know, it's almost like how Standoff was very self-contained. I don't know. I I think if it were if it wasn't a clip show, I think this story had enough going for it that it probably would have gone up to an eight. But it's just, I don't know. It almost would have been more fun if maybe some of the examples that he's thinking about in his head, it might have been more fun if those were clips from episodes that didn't exist. And like they just shot a couple of like special clips for those montages just to say like these are some of the uh, the events that have happened between episodes or between seasons. Um, I don't know. I think if it wasn't a clip show, I just think it would be a much more solid episode because the only things I was really that interested in in it was how is Clark going to get out of this evaluation? That was enough drama for me. You didn't need the clips. I, I was perfectly happy just watching that. Um, so, yeah. 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 It's so 7.5 7. 7. on this, you know, it's a great episode. I still say it's better than People versus Metallo. I think it has overtaken my ranking. This this is the best clip show that I can remember seeing for Superboy. I know we've still got one to go, I think, but I, I don't remember Superboy. that being a yeah, which isn't a good one. I don't remember that being a good one at all. I think the only good part of that episode is the interaction between him and Lana at the end when right. he's basically telling her, yeah, you know. I could explain all of these these times where I've disappeared, but it wouldn't matter because when he shows up, I disappear to you. Yeah. 
And obviously, we just saw that clip in this episode. And yeah. is that the clip that you said? Oh, no, you said it's, it is that episode that's got the clip from Metamorphosis, even though Metamorphosis hadn't aired yet. That that episode has Metamorphosis in it. Right. It's the sequence when uh, old Lana is asking where Clark is. And he says, uh, I don't know. I think I I know Matt's with the body. I don't I haven't seen Clark. Hmm. That episode doesn't isn't doesn't air until the next disc. Yeah, and it's funny as well because we have theorized plenty of times that seasons three and four were originally intended to release in a different order. It's why, you know, the suit for season four when they switch to the royal blue on the suit. It's why there's a bunch of episodes in season three where he just randomly is wearing that suit. It's because those episodes were supposed to be season four. Yeah. And it's it probably happens the other way around. There's probably a couple of season four episodes where he's just randomly in the old suit again. Um, the fact that there's two clip shows that aired back to back suggests that maybe originally that wasn't supposed to be the case because why the hell would you schedule that on purpose? I assume that there was just maybe another episode and just maybe the visual effects weren't finished or something, so they had to delay it. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, there could be any number of perfectly reasonable explanations for it it's just it's a strange thing yeah um, but anyway maybe we'll watch that one maybe let's not watch it next week let's watch something that isn't a clip show next week <laughs> let's let's next give the gap to the show boring. yeah just because the show gave us two clip shows back to back i don't think we should uh yeah, yeah so we don't, want, we don't want to turn our fans off I mean, maybe they figured it was right at the end of season four. Who's who's going to care at this point? They're not making any more. Um, either way, it doesn't really matter. We're not going to watch another clip show next week. We'll decide something to watch on the day. Maybe we'll watch something from the George Reeves show. Mate. That could be fun. Um, yeah. I don't think we've ever done that apart from when we did, you know, Panic the episode the Panic in the Sky. Yeah. Um, that could be fun. We'll, dis we'll discuss it during the week and get back to you. We'll see you next week anyway. Goodbye.